TV characters exist largely for a purpose, be that to entertain, to drive a story forward, or in many cases to create drama with others. It's no wonder that many fictional characters end up as two-dimensional, even if they didn't start out that way, because when they settle into a groove of function, they're much easier to identify. TV characters can be good, evil, or somewhere on that sliding scale of morality between those points. However, despite being positioned on one end and framed in a way that viewers are meant to sympathise with them, some characters are just not as good as they first seem. Just like real people, characters can be flawed in ways that actually don't make them that likeable at all. In this list, we'll be looking at characters that audiences realised over time were actually not quite as nice as they first thought they were. I'm Cy for WhatCulture.com and these are 10 TV characters who are secretly terrible people. Number 10. Ted Mosby, How I Met Your Mother how I Met Your Mother is the go-to answer when it comes to shows that started out strong, lost their way, and then imploded in the final few moments with one hell of a dud ending. It's also the easy first answer for protagonists that everyone got sick of. The real issue with Him Yim is that it went on for far too long, and the quaint little setup of Ted Mosby telling his kids the story of how he met their mother becomes a winding, sordid tell-all about his string of awful relationships. Along the way, Ted obsesses over Robin on multiple different occasions, cheats on Victoria, dumps Natalie on her birthday twice, and still complains that nobody wants to be with the nice guy. Sure, the whole show is about Ted's search for love, but seven seasons of him pining and obsessing eroded the original charm that his character had exuded. Finally, whilst the mother of Ted's children turns out to be wonderful, by the time we meet Tracy, audiences felt that Ted ultimately didn't deserve her. She was too pure for this self-obsessed neurotic jackass, who, it turned out, was just telling the story to get permission from his kids to chase after their Aunt Robin again. Gross. Number 9. Laurie Grimes Across its 12-year run, The Walking Dead had a massive list of characters that came and went, but few got close to how absolutely infuriating Laurie Grimes was. On the surface, Laurie was a loving mother and wife. When the zombie apocalypse destroyed the United States and her husband was presumed dead, she did the only thing she could by escaping her home with her son and heading to the safe zone in Atlanta. So when Rick arrives, it's not surprising that Laurie is a bit mixed up emotion-wise. Still, as the group reaches the farm and then the prison, things really start to fall apart. She seems ignorant to the reality of the situation and more focused on her own drama, putting lives in danger by suggesting supply runs or convincing Rick to go out of his way to save the abandoned Merle. She pushes back against the idea that Carl should be trained on how to use firearms in a zombie apocalypse. And worst of all, she plants the seed in Rick's brain that something has to be done about the wildcard Shane and then is horrified when her husband kills him. In the end, Laurie's death is remembered for the impact it had on Rick, Carl, and their relationship more than a sad farewell to a deeply troubled character. Number 8. Neelix, Star Trek Voyager In Star Trek Voyager, the crew of the titular ship are slingshotted to the far reaches of space, and have precious little other option than just journeying back in the direction of home in hope they find some way to accelerate the 75-year-long journey. On their travels, they are joined by a few alien crew members, namely Neelix, who becomes the ship's cook. Voyager's crew repeatedly had to deal with the reality of their unenviable situation, whilst this high-spirited disaster prattled around the kitchen, making comically bad food and misunderstanding human customs. In short, Neelix's presence was a total tonal disconnect. However, being annoying doesn't make you a terrible person. Pining after a literal child does, though. Kez, another alien picked up on the crew's journey, is part of a species that only lives for nine years. When she enters the show, despite her appearance, she's a mere two years old. Sure, alien species all work a little differently, but she's not even a fourth of the way into her expected life, and suddenly a much older man is thrusting his emotional needs onto this poor sheltered girl. Neelix repeatedly makes demands of Kess, and when their relationship falls apart, he is entirely defined by his jealousy. As irritating as he was as the comic relief, Neelix turned out to be way worse when he was acting like a creep. Number 7. Rachel Green – Friends Whilst it tends to be a unanimous opinion that Ross Geller was the worst of Central Perk's most devoted customers, this list is about characters who are less overtly awful. Ross is a crappy person from day one, pompous, obsessive, and self-serving, but his friends aren't much better when you look below the surface. The show ends with Ross and Rachel finally getting together, which is meant to be a feel-good, off-into-the-sunset kind of moment. In actuality, there's no way that that relationship survived because Rachel is every bit as selfish as her on-again, off-again love interest. 
Looking back over the 10 seasons of Friends, Rachel repeatedly manipulates others to get her way. As Ross tries to find love elsewhere, Rachel interferes, causing him numerous breakups with the likes of Bonnie and Mona. Proclaiming your love to your long swooning ex-boyfriend on his wedding day is not something that a good friend does. Whilst many believe that the true story of Friends is the progression of rich girl Rachel finding herself and ergo some of her spoilt behaviour fits, she never really outgrows sabotaging the happiness of others for her own gain. Number 6. Xander Harris, Buffy the Vampire Slayer In the earlier seasons of Buffy, Xander is introduced as a bit of a clueless comedic relief and a well-meaning screw-up. As time goes on though, his character never really grows, which only heightens his other, far more toxic character traits. Xander is judgmental, manipulative and extremely prone to jealousy. Even aside from stringing Willow along for far too long, when Xander does meet his eventual fiance Anya, all he ever seems to do after a certain point is complain about her to anyone who will listen. Instead of talking to her about his unhappiness, he waits until their wedding day to call things off with Anya, and then gets angry at her for finding someone else. Despite his constant mistakes and bad decisions, which include withholding information that could save Angel's soul and letting him die, the Scooby Gang repeatedly forgives Xander, which is something he can never do for others. He treats Spike and Faith with contempt for their prior misgivings, despite the fact he's not really been much better. It didn't take most fans of Buffy all that long to figure out the nerdy Motormouth was a pretty awful guy, but for every heroic moment in later seasons, he does something irredeemably terrible to his so-called friends. Number 5. Leonard Hofstadter, The Big Bang Theory in many sitcoms, characters are defined by their flaws. When you're looking for characters with good track records for being bad people, there's several in the Big Bang Theory, but it's Leonard Hofstadter who manages to be way worse than he immediately comes across. In fact, Leonard falls very easily into the habit of putting up a front and pretending to be what he's not. What defines Leonard far more than his intellect or his lovelorn chase of Penny is that he lets his insecurities get the best of him. Whether that's mocking Penny's boyfriends, reading Penny's journals, or doing Penny's work for her, Man, Leonard really did have a weird thing about controlling her life. Worst of all is that Leonard repeatedly chastises his friends group that is made up of overachieving science nerds for being, well, nerds. It's a classic example of the pot calling the kettle black as Leonard tries to distance himself from his socially awkward friends when they only want the best for him. What actually makes Leonard stand out is that whilst the other characters in the show grow over time and overcome their flaws, Leonard does very little changing. He's still the same insecure pushover from season one even 12 years later. Number 4. Amy Pond, Doctor Who Whilst Doctor Who fans' favourite topic of debate is the best and worst incarnations of the titular character, there's just as much conversation to be had about the time-travelling companions they've taken with them along the way. When Stephen Moffat took over the show in 2010, he did so with a fresh slate, a new Doctor, a new TARDIS design, and a new companion in Amy Pond. Amy was the nine-year-old girl who met the Doctor once as a child and had grown up fascinated by the experience. Whilst adult Amy was often portrayed as a kick-ass woman with a sharp wit and control over over her own desires and sexuality, she spent most of her time on the show selfishly breaking the heart of her future husband Rory over and over again. Amy's confused feelings about the Doctor were an interesting character flaw, but they don't excuse the actions of Mrs. Pond. Maybe just work your issues out rather than steaming ahead with a man you can walk all over. Not only does Amy originally refuse to acknowledge that she's dating Rory in front of her raggedy Doctor, she kisses the Doctor whilst engaged and even walks out on Rory on their wedding day. Somehow despite all of this, the golden retriever that is Rory Williams stood by the self-centred Amy Pond until the very end. Rory, you're too good for her. Number 3. Jack Shepard Lost when the water cooler Conqueror Lost first came to air, Jack Shepard was the affable and handsome hero that was perfect to lead the show. A capable and resourceful surgeon, Jack grounded the debate around the mysteries of the island and the plane crash. Whilst the fearless leader started out as a skeptic of the island's strange mythos, when Jack began launching headfirst into his beliefs, he put others in harm's way over and over again. In truth, Jack had all the tools to actually survive the island and assist others. As the only trained doctor of the group, he should have realised his role and contributed Instead, he repeatedly put himself in danger due to his obsession with fixing things. Worse, the more audiences saw of Jack's life outside of the island, judging his dad for drinking on the job, not making time for his son, the more clear it was that the stoic thinking man was unhinged and abusive. As the show went on, audiences noted that Jack had an anger issue. Seriously, any time anything went wrong, the good doctor would wind up shouting at someone, and if there was no one around, he'd just shout at himself. If fans have to go back, 
back and watch Lost, they'll see that Jack Shepard was a terrible choice for a leader. Number 2. Marie Schrader, Breaking Bad to this day, Breaking Bad fuels conversations about the lines of morality, and whilst Walter is a pretty reprehensible fellow, he's not the only lawbreaker in his family. It's not necessarily a secret that Marie is up to no good, but it's certainly a storyline that gets lost in the large shadow of Walter White's descent into the criminal underworld. During the first season, as Walt begins his transformation, Marie also dabbles in breaking the law by shoplifting shoes. When confronted about this, she claims ignorance. Amusingly, she does this whilst on the phone to her husband Hank, deriding her son-in-law for assumed marijuana usage, which goes to show that she's almost blind to her own wrongdoings. Ego is a big part of Breaking Bad, and in the end, even Walter admits that he did the things he did because he enjoyed doing them and the rush of power that becoming Heisenberg had given him. This is certainly true of Marie too. While she doesn't remotely do anything nearly as outright evil as Walt, viewing houses for sale and exuberantly lying about her life to make herself feel good is feeding the ego. There's a reason that everything Marie owns is draped in purple, a colour associated with royalty and fine goods. A reach for something that she feels she deserves. Number 1. Jim Halpert the Office. Throughout the earlier seasons of The Office, Jim and Pam's will-they-won't-they they romance was the driving force of the story. Around the wacky caricatures of Dunder Mifflin, Jim was very clearly written as not just the most relatable employee, but as a desirable bachelor. Handsome, down-to-earth, and with a wicked sense of humour. His bullying of Dwight aside, Jim's biggest issues rear their head intermittently throughout the show. Before even entering a relationship with Pam Beasley, Jim shows that his desires come first by kissing her repeatedly while she's engaged to another man. After Jim and Pam marry, he uses their savings to not only buy his childhood home without telling her, but later to also privately invest in his own business idea. In earlier seasons, Pam's desire to pursue art trails off and her dream dies as she becomes a stay-at-home mother whilst Jim gets his way yet again. And it's not just his wife, Jim mistreats other women too, convincing Karen from the Stanford branch to move to Scranton and start a relationship with him despite the fact he knew he still had feelings for Pam is a dick move. The issue of sexism in the workplace was an overt running theme for The Office, but Jim's treatment of women is much more quietly flawed. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below and any other characters you can think of that seem nice but are actually kind of horrible. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I've been Cypher Culture, and have a good week.